Now we begin to talk about count vectorizer. Essentially, these vectorizers try to put the unstructured data, which is how mostly our text is, to a structured form. We want to bring it to a shape where we have fixed number of rows and columns. And how this process evolves is what we're going to see here. First step would always be a count vectorizer. It's a frequency-based thing. We'll talk about it in a step-by-step -step way. So what is a count vectorizer? Count vectorizer is a text vectorization technique that's used in NLP and machine learning to convert a collection of text documents into a matrix of token counts. Token is, you can say, another name for the word. Not strictly speaking, but you can safely use it as a replacement word. It's a part of the scikit-learn library in Python. The resulting matrix can be used as input to machine learning models, such as classifiers or clustering algorithms or even regressors for that matter. So let's say we have a sentence that we have tokenized. When we say tokenized, we seem to have broken that into the words here right now. That's what we broadly mean. The sentence was something like this. The chef added more and more spices to the sizzling stir fry. Let's see. So in this sentence, if you see, the appears twice at two places. That's why the count is two. And the name is count vectorizer, right? Then the word chef appears just once. Then we talk about added. Now, now depending on whether we perform stemming or not, this may just reduce to add, but as of now, we're just looking at it like added. Then we have the word more, and more again appears twice, so you have the count there as well. Then we have and. Now, if you're doing stop word removal, it would not be there, but as of now, we've neither removed the nor we have removed and. We're just keeping them as is. Now, you realize why stop words often need to be removed, because if we keep on maintaining them, they will keep on appearing every now and then. And then the word spices appears once, then two, it's a preposition. This will again be dropped. D, we've already counted. Sizzling is another word. Again, if you do stemming, you'll probably look at a root form of this, which will be sizzle, and then stir fry. So count vectorizer in a simple way is just attaining the counts relative to the occurrence of each word in a given text. This text could be one sentence. This could be one paragraph. This could be a page or a whole book. This is the basic idea. Let's understand the steps involved in count vectorization. So first is tokenization. You cannot count how many words are there unless you have really dismantled the sentence. So the first step is to break down each document into individual words or tokens. This is known as tokenization. We have some default options in Python, like dot .split to kind of break it, and more organized and more language familiar approaches that are available through word tokenize that comes from the NLTK library. We'll be talking about that too in the hands-on piece. Then we move about counting the A. Occurrences, so count vectorizer has inbuilt capabilities. Of course, there's a code behind it, which counts the occurrences of each unique word in the document, and it results in a matrix where each row responds to a document and each column corresponds to a unique word in the entire corpus, entire collection of text. Then, most of the times when you do count vectorization or when you're trying to arrange the unstructured text data to a structured form, it would have a lot of zeros. So let's take an example. So let's say people often go to restaurants and when they leave their feedback for a restaurant, they would often be talking about the ambience, the food and service and things like that. So the context here is specific to a restaurant. The vocabulary here might not be the entire English vocabulary, but might be very context specific. Still, it will have at least a few thousand words. It's very common to have 25, 30,000 words for a given context. Now, how many words would a feedback contain? A feedback would have what, maybe 10, 20, 50 words, but the vocabulary could be as wide as about 20,000 words. So obviously you will have a lot of zeros in this case because your vocabulary, if that takes the columns of the data and the words you're using are limited in counts, obviously in that case, you would have a lot of zeros for every feedback. And you'll get this better when we start with the example here. So it kind of emphasizes the same. The output is typically a sparse matrix where most of the entries are zeros because most documents do not contain all the unique words in the entire corpus. And that's why it is efficient for handling large data sets with a large vocabulary. Finally, we can do feature extraction. Each element in the matrix, each cell in the matrix represent the count of a specific word in a specific document. So a particular word might be used more frequently in a specific feedback compared to another feedback. That's quite likely. When people are very expressive about a great experience or maybe the, the other extreme where they're not very happy, they may repeatedly use certain kind of words which will appear more often compared to a normal scenario. So you'll be able to differentiate between how important a word is to a particular document or a feedback. 
And eventually we are going to use this matrix as an input to the machine learning algorithms where each word is treated like a feature or a column in the data. Next, we'll be talking about the TFIDF vectorizer.